In this video, I'm bending acrylic, bending aluminum, and I'm using all of the extensions in my screwdriver set to build an 8-core AMD-powered AIO slash monitor stand PC. Brace yourselves as this one has it all. Removable dust filters, fans, easily accessible USB ports, a power button, and most importantly, it has black bolts. Before I start, I just wanted to let you know that you can now find me on Patreon, where I offer different perks in exchange for your support. The goal is to gather some resources for the two things that I need desperately ever since I became a dad. A workshop space outside my apartment and some free time. So go check me out on Patreon, the link is in the description down below. Now let's get started. The stand is made of solid wood that is a leftover from my desk PC for adults build. The monitor attaches to it via a small visa mount while all components are stored behind it in a case made of aluminum, steel, acrylic, PLA and my wife's wedding skirt. Just kidding, I obviously used PETG and not PLA, as it can take much more heat before it melts. Like I already mentioned, it has some 3D printed DIY dust filters, one that slides in and out, and a set of magnetic ones. Two 80mm fan up top exhaust some of the heat coming from the almighty 8 cores AMD Ryzen 1800X CPU. The case is screwed onto the stand, and the entire contraption is pretty well balanced. I cut the wood on a miter saw in a secret location, when there's no conditions to film. I came back home with a set of puzzles and started putting the stand together. To make sure everything aligns correctly, I glued one part to another first, let it cure, and then drilled pilot holes for the screws. I didn't have a countersink drill bit big enough for those large head screws, so I used a 10mm spade drill bit to make room for the screw. This actually turned out better than I expected, even when drilling at an angle. I used bar clamps to keep the parts steady while drilling and eyeballed how I'd want the neighboring pieces to be joined with screws that I believe were 50 or 60 mm long. After putting the stand together, I moved on to making the case. I did model this in SketchUp as I usually do, but I still did a real life test to make sure that this layout will actually work. I marked bending points on a 1 meter long 15 by 15 mm angled bracket that will make out the main part of the outline. I made two cuts to remove some of the aluminum, placed the bar flat against the table and slowly formed 90 degrees band. After making two of those, I cut a piece of 20mm wide flat aluminum bar to complete the outline. I fixed the two together with four rivets, two on each side, and trimmed the excess. To fill in the blank space, I cut a sheet of perforated steel, the very same that makes out the bottom of the drawer in my desk PC. I really need to pick up jigsaw blades for cutting steel since cutting 1mm thick steel by hand takes forever. Oh, and while I'm at it, this is the reason why it's hard for me to estimate price of my builds. I bought a 1 square meter sheet for 25 or so dollars and I managed to use it for 3 different projects and there's still enough left for at least 3 more. I fixed the steel to the aluminum frame using, yep, you guessed it, rivets. I flipped the frame and marked two mounting points for the HDplex PSU. This time around, instead of using threaded inserts, I decided to tap threads directly in the aluminum frame and so I drilled holes and tapped M3 thread in each. Next, I placed the components onto the frame to figure out where to put mounting point supports. For that purpose, I cut three pieces of 50mm flat bar to run from the top to the bottom and attached all three using rivets. Then I put the motherboard in place and marked four installation points. Drilled holes and tapped them. On the top edge, I drilled mounting points for the two 80mm fans and two more to screw the frame to the wooden stand. For the outer shell, I ordered a 50 by 40 cm sheet of 4mm thick acrylic. I used to bend acrylic using a heat gun, but I figured it was high time to step up the game and I built myself a proper acrylic bender. I fired up the Bender 3000 and made two 90 degrees bends along the longer edge. I slightly overdid one, but I fixed it later with a heat gun. I had to make few openings in the acrylic for air vents and whatnot. Since I'm not very good at cutting straight lines in acrylic, I settled for circles. I printed a template, traced circle centers onto a masking tape, drilled pilot holes with a wood bit which has a very sharp tip and used a hole saw to make those pretty circles. I did that for those two exhaust fans on the top and something similar for the air intake right above the CPU cooler. I established where I'd want to screw the plastic onto the frame and drilled holes for M4 bolts. I actually drilled 1mm into the plastic with a larger bit 
before going all the way through with a smaller one to make a pocket for the screw head. If that isn't attention to detail, then I don't know what is. I cut aluminum pipe to rise the PCI Express Remoon riser assembly, but it turned out I didn't have screws long enough to elevate the GPU. So I had to make a riser from a square piece of aluminum, which I bolted onto the frame and tapped to M3 size holes in it. To make openings for the motherboard and video card I.O. ports, I made pilot holes in corners and cut the rest using a jigsaw. I wasn't sure how well cutting acrylic with a jigsaw will work, but I turned the RPMs down to minimum and used a generic blade that came with the jigsaw that I believe is for cutting wood. I had to get a bit creative with bar clamps and wooden supports when cutting those. It would have been much easier if I did those cuts before I bent the acrylic. I also had to make a rectangular cutout for the stand and an opening for the power brick connector. Next, I designed and printed a bracket for the CPU dust filter. All parts were printed on the Ender 3, which handled PETG filament with no problems at all. The dust filter was printed in two parts. The main part has a small protrusion, making it easier to grab the frame and pull it out. I attached a piece of tool to it using fabric glue and fixed the top part, completing the frame. After half an hour or so, I trimmed the fabric. With the CPU dust filter complete, I was ready to glue the bracket in place. The problem was that acrylic wall was bent out of shape due to me overdoing one of the bends. So I took the good old heat gun and treated the edge just enough to bend it back so the main surface was more or less flat. After sorting that out, I mixed some glue and fixed the bracket in place. Next, I measured, designed and printed side covers with some air vents since you can't have too much of those when dealing with such tight space. For some reason, the one on the power supply side printed 10mm short. I didn't feel like wasting another 6 hours of printing time, so I designed and printed a small extension with a hole for the power supply switch. I fixed some more of that wedding skirt to the side panels and acrylic around the exhaust fan's openings. Then, I marked the mounting points on the tab where the frame attaches to the stand and drilled pilot holes. With the frame in place, I marked the visa mount bracket position and drilled holes in the perforated steel frame and the wooden stand. Next, I marked the points for the side panels, drilled holes and tapped M3 threads. The frame didn't look very presentable, so I sanded it down a little bit and painted it black. After two layers, I did some touch-ups with a spray paint. With such case cover, I had to remove the video card's I.O. bracket and made a support that would attach to the base and to the GPU where the bracket screwed in originally. With the components frame ready, I sanded down the stand and applied some oil, the same that I used for my desk PC. There was a quite large surface at the back without any proper filtering, so I printed three frames, each comprising two parts. Put tool in between and glued both together. To hold each in place, I added a strip of magnetic tape at the top and the bottom. The tape isn't very strong and I didn't know if it will be able to hold the filter in place, but it actually worked perfectly. Oh, and I'm well aware that this material isn't perfect for making dust filters, but it's something, and just in case you forgot, I'm prototyping an idea and I won't be using this computer at all. Initially, I didn't feel like painting the back of the frame, but my OCD wouldn't let me leave it as it was, so I spray painted it black. I also screwed in cable ties into the stand that I eventually didn't use. With everything ready, I proceeded with the assembly. First went in the HDplex power supply, held in place with two M3 bolts, which I cut so they don't protrude from the frame. Next, those two 80mm exhaust fans. Followed by the power connector. After that, the motherboard sitting on a set of standoffs. A very generic PCI Express riser cable is fixed to the frame using two M3 bolts. Inserting GPU was a bit tricky, as you have to put the video card in place, slide in the support bracket and secure it on both ends. 
Wire management in such confined space isn't easy, but I think I did pretty good. Next, I screwed in one of the side covers and put in the power button. I clamped the stem to the workbench so it doesn't tip over when I attach the computer. After securing the frame with two screws on top, I fixed the visa mount base. Next, I attached the other side piece and put those magnetic filters in place. I took my 34-inch ultra-wide Dell monitor off the wall and replaced the visa mounting plate. I put it on the stand and secured it with bolts. I had to use all the extensions from my screwdriver set to reach to one of the bolts. After securing the monitor, I anxiously removed the clamp unsure whether the entire contraption will be balanced. Fortunately, my willy-nilly engineering turned out to be correct, so I put the cover on and attached a small USB hub to the back of the stand. The CPU hits 75 degrees under full load and it does thermal throttle, but only a tiniest bit. I'm pretty sure that rotating the heatsink 90 degrees and using better exhaust fans would help. The Zodiac GTX 1050 didn't sweat much in those conditions, hitting 61 degrees. The computer obviously isn't silent, but the noise level is far from being disturbing when idling and doesn't get much louder under full load. I really like how this build turned out and I do believe that this could be a viable alternative to a regular PC case. I know it isn't exactly an AIO PC, but truth be told, it's much more practical, as you can easily swap components, including the screen, as long as it has a Visa compatible mount and it's large enough to cover the computer. Building a proper AIO would require disassembling the screen, which equals to losing your warranty, and I didn't feel like doing that to a $1000 monitor. Putting the computer together is a bit tricky, as the entire contraption is balanced only when both the computer and the screen are attached to the stand, but I think it would be possible to address this issue. Anyways, I really hope you liked this build, as it was a ton of work. Make sure to check me out on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.